Hello and welcome. I hope you're safe and well in today's exciting episode. I make several dresses, but I started out making the grey one that Meg Ryan wears at the end of You've Got Mail, my own version of that. It's very pretty. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. So in the movie, she wears a dress that has sleeves and then she wears like a vest over the top but I would wear a jacket and a, a sleeveless dress and I was going to make the jacket first but I still can't decide which pattern I've got three that I've used before the two that I did when I did that dating quiz and one other one the Berta 6123 but I've also got two vintage ones that I might want to try first so I'll postpone the jacket for a moment and I'll make the dress first. So what I'm going to do is in the movie her dress is a very light grey in a linen. I am I did think about I've got a linen cotton blend in a different colour but I just think I'll use the quilting cotton in the pale really pale grey and then I was like that's what she wears in the movie. And then I was thinking, well, um, oh, daisies are her favourite flower and I've got this vintage print daisy fabric. It's so adorable. I think I've got five yards of that. So I can make a vintage dress out of that. So instead of just making one dress, like I'm going to make the grey one, but that's kind of what she wears at the end. And then I was like, well, if I was a costume designer for this movie, what would I have made her wear? But also if I was going to go to Riverside Drive Park and meet a guy for the first time, what would I wear? I mean, she kind of meets him for the first time in the cafe. And I mean, the outfits are kind of the same. So anyway, those were my questions. I was like, well, what would I wear? So that's why I got out the daisy fabric, because in the movie, she says that daisies are her favourite flower. She thinks they are the, she goes, I love daisies. Don't you just think daisies are the friendliest flower? And he already knew that her her favourite flower were daisies because when they were in the her bookshop, um, she lent his little child a, a handkerchief with a daisy embroidered on it. Ugh, I really do not like the Tom Hanks character. He's so slimy. I mean, it's played well, but I it's based on another really old black and white movie, which is based on a play. And I've read the play, and I've seen the black and white movie, and they're so they're so sweet and wholesome and adorable. I think that's why the um, you've got mail is slightly jarring to me because it's it's a billionaire being manipulative, and I just do not like it at all. But anyway, um, I got out the pink and the navy blue because they're pretty colours I would wear them in a dress this one I got out just because it happened to be near the other ones and there's two yards two meters so there's enough to make a a nice simple dress but it's not really me that fabric it's lovely it's a liberty fabric but it's not very nice um it's just not me uh this one is beautiful it's just a vintage one and I do think the female lead in this movie should wear vintage prints I just think it would be really beautiful that when I got out again it was just with the ones that I was picking up and I was like oh, it's not me at all I very rarely wear red and but I just got it out because I don't like the words on it though but I don't know it just reminds me of watermelon so I got it and which I absolutely love watermelon so I got it out this one I got out because the those maroon colour flowers kind of look like gerber daisies and it's a lovely vintage print but I think it's a bit too colourful but Riverside Drive Park they um depending on which bit of the garden you stand with um oh my gosh if you're ever in New York at this time of the year like at the very late summer definitely go to Riverside Drive Park. That's the thing. Every time I've gone there though, and this is another vintage look print, which I love and it's grey, but it's got way more personality than just a plain pale grey. 
Every time that I've gone to that park when I've been in New York City, I've just been jogging. So <laughs> literally, I'm pretty sure every single time I've gone to that park, I've been wearing like yoga pants, joggers and a sweaty t-shirt. <laughs> so, but I mean, you know, a guy's going to like you, he's going to like you. It doesn't really matter what you wear. But um, this one is another Liberty print and it's green and it's got different colour pinks in there and little dark lots of sunshine yellow. So I love that one. So that's definitely on the short list. And so I'm going to do that white dress, the McCall's dress. I absolutely adore that pattern. I think if I was going to meet someone in New York City, then I would meet them probably at Central Park. There's at Strangers Gate. It's in the same area of New York, but it's just a little, it's in Central Park rather than in um, the park that's on the side near the river. Um, you go up these stairs and you that's what the entrance is called, is Stranger's Gate. Oh, I included this one because it's a fair ground and Tom Hanks is in this other old movie called Big where he buys a ticket at this fair ground. Anyway, that's why I got that fabric out. So I'm going to put these ones away and I've shortlisted these ones here so I'm going to decide out of these ones. And then I remember that I tapped... Yeah, that's my favourite, the green one. It's so pretty. You've already seen the ones that I make. Oh, anyway, I always forget because I tack on the end bits after I've done the whole video. I do the start, the intro. Anyway, so I remember that I have these two other Liberty prints. These are two of my Make 9 fabrics and they're floral. So they sort of go with the community garden, but they're... um but they're different colours than the flowers in the community garden, so she'd stand out, but she'd kind of match as well. Anyway, I took away the ones that aren't ironed, <laughs> because of course I did, and I decided to go with, these are my four on the shortlist, and then I decided to just do the top three, because they'll use the same colour thread, <laughs> and then I I do really like that darker grey one with the vintage print, but yeah. So I cut out all of these from that Pretty McCall's pattern and then with the bottom of the skirt, I tore this into three different tiers. So the first tier is two yards, the second tier is four yards and the bottom tier is eight yards. And then with the light grey fabric, I just, after I'd cut the bodice, I used the rest of the fabric um, I, I cut that into three bits because two bits was going to be too, um, it was too long and too thin. And then with the Liberty fabric, I just cut that into two bits because they were different widths of fabric. So I had to cut them different ways. Anyway, so then I made the three bodices. They're just all the same and got pale pink for the lining. So the green one looks like a frog. It's green on the outside. And you know those cute green frogs that have the green underbelly? I mean, the pink underbelly. So cute. Anyway, so this is me pointing out out that I've also sewn each of the layers of the skirts of the dresses into a big loop of fabric. So now I just have to pleat them down and sew them together. I do have three layers for the daisy dress, but I only had time to do the top two layers. So <laughs> it actually looks quite cute. So this is me showing you what the um, bodice looks like on the mannequin. It's just really cute. So it is that white dress, the McCall's dress, but I just added a like five centimeters, which is two inches to the bottom of it because it's really cute, the dress in the, the way it is. And I've also changed, altered the neckline just the tiniest bit. It's just a little bit lower. If it's still seems, the neckline still seems way too high for you, then I would recommend, but you want to pull on dress, pull over dress, I would recommend um, Butterick 6677 because it's a lower neckline and you can use it as like a pinafore or a jumper dress. Anyway, so then I pleated down, oh my god, this took, how did this take less the reason I made a dress was because I thought it would take less time than a jacket, but I ended up making three dresses. It's ridiculous. 
Anyway, so I pleated them down, I machine sewed them and I haven't done their hand stitching on the inside yet. But here is the grey dress. This is adorable. Seriously, it's even cuter than I thought it would be. Like I knew it would be cute, but this is just adorable. It is like the perfect summer dress. Oh, and if you go up the stairs in Strangers Gate and you go to the right, during um in central park then there's this like little wilderness area and they have fireflies during summer and the end of summer and it's just it's magical so i would probably meet someone there because i absolutely i didn't grow up in a place that had fireflies and they just seem magical to me so i'll probably meet there instead and um, that's what it looks like without a tie and this is what it looks like with a tie. So with this one I did the pleats slightly bigger than I did the pleats on the other two and it's knife pleats. Knife pleats mean all the pleats go one way. There's an, the other alternative is box pleats where they all go into the centre. So the left ones come into the left, the right ones come into the right, and then on the back the left ones go into the left, the right ones go into the right, whereas these ones are all the way around. I tried it with the um, a jacket over the top. I personally just wear my jackets with a T-shirt and jeans. And I suppose, yeah... That's my most average outfit, I guess, <laughs> when I'm jogging, yoga pants and a t-shirt, when I'm, um, or like, you know, exercising, but when I'm just wearing average clothes, t-shirt and jeans with a jacket over the top or tweed jacket over the top or just a simple dress. So, and these are the other two. So with the daisy one on the left, as you can see, I've only done the top two layers. I haven't done the third layer. It's sort of at knee length-ish at the moment, which is too short for me. I mean, it's perfectly fine, but I prefer, like, I just think vintage dresses are adorable. So I will probably add the, at some point, <laughs> I will add the third layer. I have um, a different red and white vintage dress in um I used the the bodice for the other one is bird um butterick double six double seven so once I finish this daisy one here I'll get the other red and white dress out too and I'll show you I'll compare the two for you and you can see which one you would um prefer because they are two of my favorite dress patterns and I don't think I've done a video where I compare the two because, yeah, they are slightly different, but also quite similar. Anyway, I think the green one is my favourite. It's just so pretty. I've got some pale pink shoes, because of course I do, and my Valentino neon green handbag. I think that's what I'd wear with them. I do like that she doesn't get dressed up and look completely different for a date at the end. I think that's, yeah... I don't like it when people, whenever I do a style video, people inevitably ask me what they can wear to like, you know, to be more successful romantically. And I'm like, first of all, it's straight up hilarious that you're asking me. But also, I don't think guys want to take you to a secondary location so they can ask you details about your clothes. I mean, each their own. If you want a toxic relationship, oh, I tend to divide people into those who want toxic relationships and those who want healthy relationships. That's just me judging everyone. <laughs> I think we all judge everyone, but I just do it a little bit more blatantly, perhaps. Anyway, but if you're a gold digger, then I do think the way you look, if you essentially want to be paid to be a trophy, then obviously your looks are very important and then, you know, just know your target audience. I'm definitely not recommending you an unhealthy lifestyle, but each their own. But if you want a healthy relationship with a wholesome person, then the whole point of a healthy relationship is to, you know, be honest, I would in my opinion. So yeah, just wear what you're comfortable with. But I don't know. I do think style matters because style is a form of nonverbal communication. So it does indicate whether you're also good at other forms of nonverbal communication. So in that respect, I think it's relevant. But yeah, 
I don't know. I guess if superficial things matter to you, like I think fashion matters, like historically and politically, it has always mattered, but that's different than being superficial. So I don't know. I think you just need to know your target audience and build from there, like develop your strategy from there. I really don't think I'm the right person to ask. So I'm like, yeah, I'll just wear a t-shirt and jeans. And yeah, but I do love these dresses. They are absolutely adorable, especially this this one here. It's it's like I love the print, but it's just so cute as a dress. So cute. And uh yeah, I just love it when you watch a movie and you can tell that the costume designer has really put a lot of time and effort into the costume design. I love that. Anyway, there you go. I highly recommend this pattern. I absolutely adore it, the McCall's one. The McCall's pattern has standard sleeves, but if you want puffy sleeves, this new look one, gorgeous puffy sleeves. And yeah, but I don't, I, I never use the skirt parts of the dress pattern. I just use the bodice. I cut out um, and I don't do the facing. I just do a fully lined bodice and then do a pleated down skirt. It just looks really vintage and simple and it's lovely. So yeah, definitely recommend you. You can never have too many summer dresses. Well, actually you can. I've got like a hundred, literally a hundred in my wardrobe. You know that movie 27 Dresses where she tries to cram more dresses into her wardrobe? Yeah, it's kind of like that situation with me at the moment. I definitely need to whittle them down. So what did I do? Make three more. But these are adorable. Well, I've only made two and a half, actually. I still haven't finished the vintage one. That's going to be super cute when it's done. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you've been inspired to make yourself a last minute summer dress or end of summer dress. Get out all your beautiful cuts of fabric that you haven't got to yet. And I'm so glad I finally got to this um, vintage daisy one and the pale grey and the liberty. Oh, they're all pretty, all pretty. Anyway, yes, definitely make yourself a summer dress. They're cute. And you can even wear them in the cooler months with a layer or two underneath. Anyway, thanks again for watching and happy sewing.